Today, we're going to take our empty and barren landscape and bring it to life with foliage. We'll be going from this to this. So stay tuned. <music> So in order to add foliage to our scene, we're going to learn how to use Unreal's Grass Tool. The Grass Tool will allow you to automatically add thousands of trees and millions of blades of grass to your scene. This is an incredibly powerful tool, but as Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. This tool also has the potential to totally destroy the performance of your scene, so I'm going to show you a couple of methods today to make dense foliage without tanking your frame rate. Before we jump into Unreal, first we need to decide what foliage to add to our scene. And that means we need to take a look at some reference. The height map that I used to create this landscape comes from an area that's right here, uh, just to the west of Santa Fe. So if we zoom in here in Google Maps, uh, this is the area that we downloaded for our height map and where we created our landscape. And if we come over here to Google Street View, you can see that there are a couple of locations where people have added uh, nice 360 degree panoramas. So if I drop our little guy right here, you can see I've got a nice 360 degree panorama of the actual area where we downloaded our landscape. And so if we take a look here, you can see that our vegetation is mostly this uh, wild, tall grass with some green and some dead grass mixed in. And then on the slopes, we have this uh, rocky, dirty uh, ground with uh, conifer trees, with these spruce and pine trees. And so this is the vegetation that we need to be looking for. We're gonna grow our grass in the flat areas and we're gonna grow our conifer trees on the sloped areas. And so the next thing that we need to do is go to our Quixel Bridge and take a look at the assets that we're gonna need. So here we are in Quixel Bridge and I can come over and click on 3D Plants and then I can click on Grass. And if we scroll down here, here's a nice one. This one's called Thatching Grass. And then this is one that we've used before. It's called Swamp Grass, and it has a little bit more green. So we can get the look of the landscape that we saw in the reference if we mix the thatching grass with the swamp grass. Now to cover a little bit more area, the other thing that I want is grass clumps. And so I'm going to download this asset here. So I'm going to use the thatching grass, the swamp grass, and the grass clumps. And I'll post a link to these in the description. And of course, you're welcome to grab whatever other plants that you'd like to, to grab as well. There are weeds here that you might enjoy. Um, you know, you can make your grass look however you want, uh, but these are the three assets that I'm going to be using. Okay, and then for trees, we need to use the Unreal Marketplace. So if I come in here to the Unreal Marketplace and I come up to search, I'm just going to do a search for spruce. And I'm going to grab this collection here. It's called the... Uh, temperate vegetation spruce forest. These are the spruce trees that we used in our previous example. We're going to be using them again uh, because number one, they're really high quality and number two, they're free. Uh, so that works great for us. All right, in both cases, I'm just going to download these exactly how they are. Uh, I forgot to mention in Quixel Bridge uh, for downloading the grass for these grass clump areas uh, assets, you can see that my download settings are just set to default for the textures and for the models as well. And so we're gonna go ahead and download those and bring them into Unreal. All right, back in Unreal, I've imported the grass and the tree assets. The grass assets are here in Mega Scans, uh, 3D Plants. You can see that I've got my grass clumps, my swamp grass, and my thatching grass. And what I've done here is I've created a little bit of a construction yard for myself. Uh, so that I can see all of the different assets that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I've got my swamp grass here in my in front. Then here I've got my grass clump variations. 
And then back here in the back, I've got my uh, thatched grass assets. So these are what I'm gonna be using to add grass to the terrain today. And then here behind, you can see that I've got uh, my various uh, variations of the pine trees. And so these are the trees that we're gonna be adding. Okay, so in order to add the grass procedurally to, to my environment, the first thing that I need to do is tell Unreal where I want the grass to grow. And so we're going to come into here to our landscape material. And our material is uh, pretty fancy looking, pretty complex. But we need to add a new node that's going to define where the grass should grow. And so I'm just going to uh, type grass here in the search and pick landscape grass output. And this is gonna add a grass node to our scene. And you can see here by default, it has one input called grass. And if I come over here to my settings, you can see that my one input called grass has an empty slot here. Well, what this is, it's, it's a slot for us to place assets that we want to spawn in that area. Before we talk about the assets though, let's talk about creating a mask. We need to make a mask that determines where our grass is going to grow. Now we decided we wanted our grass to grow in the lower elevations in the flat areas. And so we need to create a mask that does that. Here's our elevation mask that we've been using to blend between our grass and our moist stone. So our moist stone shows up in the higher elevations and our grass shows up in the lower elevations. So if we take a look at this mask, I'm just gonna grab this mask temporarily and plug it into base color so that you can see what it's doing on the landscape. If I switch into unlit mode, you can see that this mask is white at high elevations and black at low elevations. And that's kind of the opposite of what we want. So I'm gonna switch back here to my material. And what I need to do is add a one minus node and this node is going to flip the mask and invert it. So it's gonna be white at the low elevations and uh, black at the high elevations. And just for safety, I'm gonna add a saturate node to saturate the results of the mask. So let's take a look at what this is giving us. If I plug this into base color and save it, now you can see that it's white down here at the lower elevations going to change my camera speed here just a little bit and then up at the higher elevations the mask is black so we're not going to get grass up here where it's high we're just going to get it uh, down here in the valley now the next thing that we need to do is only put grass in the flat areas and not on the slopes uh, this mask here is our you can see it's the flat slope blend mask and that's going to give us uh, white where the slope is uh, flat and uh, black where it's steep. Let's preview that just to make sure. All right, so you can see that my mask is white here in the flat area and on the areas where my terrain is steep, it's black. So that is what I'm looking for. And so if I take the result of this mask and combine it with my elevation mask, I'm just gonna multiply it. Now we get a mask that is only in the low elevations and only in the flat areas. So I'm just gonna wire this in and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, so you can see up here in the high elevations, my mask uh, fades out and it's only showing up in the flat er areas of lower elevations. So that's where I want my grass to grow. All right, so I've been able to define my mask. So this output here needs to go into my landscape grass output node. And I'll just wire my color back in here to, to base color. Okay, there's one more thing that I need to do with my grass node here, and that is I need to define what grass I want to spawn. And this slot here takes a special kind of node called a grass type. And so what I need to do is come back here to my content browser and create a grass type for it. So in my case, I'm gonna come down here to this world folder that I've created, 
and I've created a new folder called grass where I can store my grass types. And you can see that I've already set up a couple of grass types, one called dirt, one called grass, and one called test. I'm gonna skip those for now and just create a new one. So here I can uh, right click and come up here to foliage and pick landscape grass type. And for this test, I'm just gonna call this grass two so that we can make one from scratch. And I'm gonna double click on this to open it. And you can see I get this big gray window that's fairly empty looking. Well, what this is, is I get a list here called grass varieties. And these are all of the different grass assets that I wanna spawn on my landscape. And you can see that right now I have zero array elements, meaning I have no grass defined. Well, if I click this plus here, it's gonna add a new element. And if I open it up, you can see that I have a whole bunch of settings here that I can set. The first and most important one is called grass mesh. And here I can drop this box down and select the grass mesh asset that I want to add. And in my, in my case, I know that I wanna add one called uh, grass clumps. And so here it is, grass clumps, lot zero var one. So this is the one that we're gonna add just to start out with. The next setting here is grass density. And by default, I've got 400 of these. And this is gonna define how many of these that I want to uh, spawn in a given area. Next, I have this use grid, which is going to jitter the placement of these uh, grass assets so that they look random, so that they're scattered out in a random uh, pattern and that they don't line up. The next setting are start cull distance and end cull distance. You can see that this is set to uh, 10,000, uh, a value of 10,000 right, right now, which is 100 meters. So my grass is going to spawn uh, and then get culled out at 100 meters. Next I have min lod. And this will allow me to skip lods if I want to. If I want to not ever draw lod zero or lod one, um, but just jump to a lower lod, I can do that. And that will help me to use fewer polygons. Next is some scaling. And this will allow me to give a random amount of scale to my grass clumps. Uh, in my case, I'm just gonna set these to uh, the max to two, which means that my grass clumps are going to pick a random amount of scaling somewhere between zero and one. And each one is gonna be a slightly different size between one and two times the base size. I'm also gonna give some random rotation to my grass. I'm gonna align the grass to the surface so that it grows uh, along the shapes of the landscape. And to save on performance, I'm gonna turn off uh, receives decals. For now, I'm gonna leave shadows on, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm just gonna hit save. And then, so I've got my grass to grass type asset defined. Then if I come back here to my landscape material, I can drop this box down and you can see that now I have grass two here and I can plug that right into the slot and hit save. And now the magic happens when we switch back to our landscape. You can see that now that I've got this extremely dense grass. I don't know if you noticed, but my frame rate is really struggling right now. Yeah, it's dropping down to lower than 30 frames a second. This grass is just uh, totally tanking my performance. And this is what I talked about when I said this tool is really powerful, but it's also really easy to tank your performance. So our grass has uh, got a couple of problems right now. First of all, it's way too thick and the thickness is killing my, our performance. It looks pretty good up close, but especially if I switch into brush wireframe, you can see here off in the distance that that wireframe is just totally solid. It's drawing, I don't know how many millions of polygons and just totally crushing uh, our frame rate. So our grass is too thick. Um, the next problem is as we move, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's a lot of popping. There's a really hard line here and the grass is, is really popping quite a bit. The 
Third problem that we have is that there's not enough variation. We're just using one type of grass clump, and so all of our grass looks exactly the same everywhere, so we need to fix that. There is a fourth problem, but I'll show it to you in a minute when it's a little bit more obvious. The first thing that we need to do is, is obviously just get rid of this density uh, so that our performance isn't just getting totally crushed. So just for now, I'm going to switch this grass density uh, on our grass type asset. I'm going to switch it from 400 uh, back to 20. All right, so now you can see that our grass is significantly more sparse. You can also see that popping a little bit more obvious. You can see when it switches here, uh, it's popping quite a bit as I transition away from it. The other problem that I was talking about is here off in the distance, you can see that we're using a cross billboard uh, for the last lot of our grass. And that billboard is just not lighting very well. It's really obvious that there's a cross there. So those are the four problems that we have. We need to manage our density. We need to fix the popping of the grass as it transitions uh, out. Uh, we need to add some variety and we need to fix this lighting on our billboard. So that's what we're gonna do uh, next. We're gonna focus on solving these four problems. For the first problem, uh, of our grass density, the way that we're going to fix that is by making three different uh, grass array elements. Our first array element is going to be our close-up grass. Our second array element is going to be our medium grass. And then our third array element is going to be our uh, far grass. So for our first array element, this is going to be our close-up grass. We're going to set our grass density to 80. So just a little bit more dense. And because it's dense and we're using a lot of polygons, we're going to try to reduce our polygon count by setting our min LOD to 3. So it's going to skip the high poly LODs and just jump right to LOD 3. Now because this is our close-up grass, we're going to set our start cull distance to 200 and we're going to set our end cull distance to 1500. So this grass is going to be popping out fairly close to the camera. And then because it is popping out close to the camera, we're gonna leave our dynamic shadows on. So let's save this and just take a look at what we get. All right, so we don't see any grass at all, but if I zoom in here, you can see that our grass pops in close to the camera. And it is still fairly dense. It's not as dense as it was at 400, um, but it's dense enough that it looks pretty good and it's not destroying our frame rate. Uh, but you can see that obvious popping there uh, in the distance. All right, so let's go ahead and add our medium grass and our far grass. And the way that we can do that is I can just right click here on the first array element and pick copy. Then I'm gonna add a new one and I can just hit paste and that'll copy all of our settings and put it into uh, the, the second slot here. Now for our medium grass element, we're gonna add a density of 40. So for our close-up grass, we had 80. We're dropping down to 40. We're gonna set our start cull distance to 1,000 and our end cull distance to 4,000. So this grass is going to go from 1,000 to 4,000 as it's up popping out. We're gonna set our min lot to one. And for this grass, we're gonna turn our shadows off because it's a little bit more uh, because it's off in the distance, the shadows aren't as visible. And we're, we'll be relying on the shadows from our near grass element and just turning it off for our medium and far grass element. So now I'm going to copy this one and add a new element and paste it in again. So now we have three grass elements. They're all spawning this grass clumps lot zero var one. And for our far grass, we're going to set its density to 20. We're going to set its start call distance also to 1000. Um, but for the end call distance, because this is the grass that we see uh, going off into the distance, uh, we're going to set this to 15,000 uh, so that the grass uh, does go off uh, a ways further. 
So what you can see that we're doing here is we have dense grass close up with a density of 80. Uh, and then a little bit further away, we have a density of 40. And then a little bit further away, we have a density of 20. So we're creating this feathering effect where we have it nice and dense close to the camera. And then as we get further away, uh, the grass gets more sparse. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll switch back over and take a look at our result. All right, so now we have this nice dense grass close to the camera. Then we have a little bit sparser grass at a medium distance. And then we have a little bit more sparse grass at a far distance. So this is what we wanna to do to keep from uh, destroying our frame rate. For the dense grass close up, we've reduced the polygon count. Uh, so we're not killing that. But then for the further away grass, we have higher polygon count, but it's less dense. And now the next problem that we need to solve is this popping. You might think if we switch back here to our grass type asset, we've set these values to fade. So we should be fading between our start and our end call distances. And if I mouse over here, we get a comment that says the distance where instances will begin to fade out if using a per instance fade amount material node. Now what that's saying is these fading distances that we defined are not going to fade out our grass unless we put this per instance fade amount node into our grass material. And so we need to go ahead and do that next because otherwise these, these fade distances that we've defined are basically doing nothing. So let's come into our level and we're gonna pick this grass clump here. And if I scroll down, you can see that I've got the materials for the grass clump. I'm gonna double click this and it'll bring me to the material instance. And then here I've got the parent. This is the material that I need to edit. So I'm gonna come in here to foliage material. And what you can see is uh, this is the material that we get by default from, uh, from Quixel Bridge, and it's just applied to all of our grass assets. You can see that my opacity is just plugged directly into my opacity mask. And what I need to do is this is the part that I've added myself. This is the part that will allow our grass to fade out. So you can see that I've added this node called per instance fade amount. And I just want to show you what this is doing. So I'm going to grab the result that's coming out of per instance fade amount. And just temporarily, I'm going to wire it into base color here. And we'll come back and take a look at what our grass is doing. All right, so now you can see that our near grass, as I move the camera away, is going from white to black. You can see these black clumps. And they turn black just before they cull out. And then our medium grass is doing the same. It goes from white close to the camera to black at our medium cull distance. And the same thing with our far grass. As we get out here to the far distance, it's going from white to black out there. And so what I can do is use this fade distance uh, to fade out the grass. The problem is, however, the kind of opacity that I'm using right now is either on or it's off. I can't actually fade through transparent. I, I can't use transparency on my grass because it would be extremely expensive and we don't wanna do that. And so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use this magic node here called Dither Temporal AA. And what this node does is uh, for every other pixel, it's making the pixel on or off, and then it's blending and dithering those pixel values over time to fake the appearance of transparency. We're not actually, actually using transparency, but this node makes it look like we are, and it's, it's really a magic effect uh, that's using a combination between uh, dithering the pixels uh, and blending them with our temporal anti-aliasing to create something that's look that looks like it's transparent, but it's actually not. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our opacity, multiply it by our per instance fade amount, then pass that result into dither temporal AA, and then plug that into our opacity mask. And so this is going to fade our grass uh, from the start fade distance to the end fade distance. 
and it's gonna get rid of all of that popping that you are seeing. And now, you can see that as I move, instead of popping, the grass slowly fades in, and it's beautiful. Let's go ahead and hit play, and we'll run around with our character for a minute. You can see that as I get closer to the grass, uh, the detail grass kind of fades in, uh, and we've gotten rid of that popping that we were seeing earlier, and that was really effective. I'm, I'm really excited that we have that really nice uh, dither temporal AA feature to solve that problem for us. All right, the next thing that we're gonna look at today is adding some more variety to this grass. So the problem with the grass variety in our scene right now is I'm only using a single grass clump. I'm just using this one mesh. And what I need to do is go in and add um, the additional grass meshes, all these others that I've laid out here, into uh, my grass to uh, grass type asset. This is going to take me a little while, uh, and so I'm not going to make you watch all of the settings that I set here, but I will go ahead and do it and show you when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this item, add a new one, and then come in here and I need to uh, paste it. And then instead of uh, this grass clump item, I can drop this down and pick the second variety of grass. And I'm going to set my start call distance to... 2000 and my end call distance to 7000. Make sure random rotation is on, align to surface, and make sure I turn off uh, receives details and cast dynamic shadows. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this same thing for all of the rest of the grass, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created array elements for each of the different varieties of my grass. These first three are the near, medium, and far clump grass. And then you can see I've created uh, another entry for my clump grass, or grass clumps variation two, my grass clumps variation three, and then uh, uh, these are all the variations of my swamp grass, and I also have uh, the variations of uh, my thatch grass. Now, for each of these, I've set the start and end call distances fairly close to the camera and also matched their size so that none of the grass was too tall or too short. Uh, so I've basically just adjusted the start and call distance and then the, the size for each of them as well. So uh, between 1,000 and 4,000 or 1,000 and 7,000 in some cases, and then my scaling uh, so that each grass clump kind of maintained uh, a good size. You can see if, if you look at the varieties here, there's a whole bunch of different sizes. Uh, and I didn't want them to vary too much. And also this grass clump over here on the left is really tall and I didn't really want that. So I wanted to scale those sizes uh, and set the culling distances. And now that I've got my uh, grass type asset all set up with all of these different varieties. If I come in here, you can see that I've got a lot of grass variation going on. Uh, my grass looks pretty random. I've got some that are tall and some that are short. Uh, so I've got a really nice amount of variety. Uh, so if we hit play here and run around with our character, can see my grass is looking pretty good. Now there is still one last problem and that is my billboards off in the distance are really lighting poorly and we're gonna save that one until next week so I hope you come back and take a look at that tutorial we're gonna be talking about how to fix lighting on distant billboards. For now the last thing that I want to do in today's video is add in the trees and in order to do that we need to come back in here to our landscape material and create a mask for our trees. So the first thing that I need to do is come over here to my grass node and add a new array element. And this is going to be for my trees. So if I open this up, I'm going to call it dirt. Uh, you might think I'd call it trees, but in my case, I want to call it dirt because it's masking out 
uh, where the dirt is showing up. And then I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to pick my dirt uh, grass type item. We'll take a look at that in a minute as soon as we uh, create the mask for it. So now I need to make a mask that plugs into my dirt socket here. And so in order to do that, I'm going to come up here to my slope material. And you can see I've got this angle blend here. I'm going to take this version of the angle blend and grab the inverse. So I want a one minus of this. And what we're doing here is we're going to be putting the trees uh, on the slopes at the lower elevations. So I need to use this slope here. And I'm going to add a saturate node. And then just like I did here, I'm going to use a one minus node to invert this mask. Then we're going to multiply the two of these together. And we're going to pass that in as our dirt mask. Now before we do that, let's take a look and see where that mask is being applied. So I'm going to plug this into our base color. And if I look at this in lit mode, in unlit mode, you can see that uh, all of my slopes are masked. So I'm going to be spawning the trees uh, where it's slightly steep, but also again, uh, not at high altitude, uh, just down here uh, where my grass is going to be. So my grass is going to show up where it's flat and then my trees are going to show up on the slopes, not the really steep slopes, but the gentle slopes where my dirt's being applied. All right, so let's switch back to our material, plug our color back in, hit save, and take a look at our result. So now you can see, in addition to the grass that we created, we also have our trees spawning. And the trees are being applied to uh, the areas where the dirt is on the slopes and the grass is showing up in the flat areas. So we have trees over here being applied to the slopes and grass in our flat areas. Pretty cool. Okay, there is one thing that I didn't show you and that is my, that is my dirt landscape grass type. So let's double click on that and we'll take a look. So this one has 11 array elements, and you can see if I open these up, I've got each of my uh, spruce trees here. And you can just take a look at the settings. Uh, you can see that the density for these is significantly lower. If I were to put a density of like two or 300 into here, it would just totally destroy my computer. Uh, and so I've got the grass density here set to 0 0.1. And that's really important because we don't want to spawn millions of trees uh, like we're spawning uh, millions of grades of blades of grass. You can also see that I've set my start cull distance to 70,000 and my end cull distance to 150,000. Uh, so the trees, because they're so much larger, uh, I want them to be visible off in the distance. And for uh, min and max scale, you can see I've got them set to 0 0.8 to 2. So let's just take a look at a couple of these. I've just, I'm just spawning all of my different trees here in the list. And if you want to, you can pause the video and take a look at the settings for each of these, but yours don't have to match exactly as long as you have your density set really low and your start and your end cull distances set to something sort of like this, you'll be fine. Now for the last couple of trees, I'm using this smaller trees, spruce small 05, for example. And you can see that I've got my density set to 0 0.05, and then I've adjusted my cull distances so that these smaller trees uh, cull out closer to the camera. And that's just based on their size. Because they're smaller, uh, you don't see them as well off in the distance, and so we can cull them out sooner. But yeah, so you just take all of your trees and you plug them into uh, these slots on the grass variety array elements. And then you define uh, the settings for how far away they cull, how dense they're gonna be. And, uh, and then you plug them into the grass node here on your uh, terrain material. 
and you end up with some cool looking trees on your landscape. All right, so just for the last thing, we're gonna take our mannequin for a run here. And our scene is starting to look pretty cool. We've got our grass, and we've got our trees, and the one thing that's still kind of an eyesore is those uh, grass billboards off in the distance. Well, that's the thing that we're gonna focus on next week. So be sure to come back next week and we'll talk about how to create grass billboards that light correctly uh, to get rid of that little bit of an eyesore of the grass off in the distance. Anyway, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed our video and uh, that you're learning some things about how to add foliage to your landscape procedurally so you don't have to paint these all by hand. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week, everybody.